story that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. Oof, there's so much to unwrap here. But what the hell is going on with the Xbox these days? Yeah, it's been a crazy few days, you know, all the bad news from Microsoft. But yeah, it all started with this IGN report. So Microsoft closed a Redfall developer Arkane Austin, Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks, and more layoffs at Bethesda. So they closed AlphaDog Studios, creator of the Mighty Doom mobile game. Roundhouse Games is absorbed in the Elder Scrolls Online developer. So technically they're not closed, but they are absorbed. But here's the email to staff sent by Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios. So yeah, 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 I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna read the juicy parts. So here are the changes that are being made. Okay, so Arkane Austin, they will close. Alpha Dog Studios, they will close it. Tango Gameworks will close, and Roundhouse Games, they, they will be absorbed, right? So here's the funny part. It turns out that Matt Booty. Oh, Matt Booty doesn't even know the names of these two studios. So he calls Alphadog Studios, but it's actually Alphadog Games. And it's also the other one, Roundhouse Games, is actually Roundhouse Studios. So that's a bit, uh, that's a bit of a, uh, yeah, how do you say that? A bit of a screw up coming from the, the, the head of Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty. That's, that's not, a good side man uh, there's bad optics yeah so when they announced this the people were in shock right people were wondering like why would microsoft do this i mean especially tango gameworks you know they've released hi-fi rush three million players played this game meta scores 87 a huge score of 8.9 this is like critical claim you know and yet they shut it the whole studio it makes no sense people are wondering why just why and even uh, when Jess Gordon last year asked Aaron Greenberg you know the vice president of Xbox games marketing at Microsoft this is what he said Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations we couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with the surprise release all I gotta say is this aged like like milk, you know? Oof, sour as hell. And there, yeah, the reasons that Matt Booty has stated why why they made these changes is because they're based on prioritizing titles with a big impact and further investments in the portfolio of Bethesda's blockbuster games and beloved worlds, which have cherished for many decades. So what what does it mean? Like Fallout, Elder Scrolls? What about these minor AA games like Hi-Fi Rush? They don't seem to care about those anymore. It makes of it. It's a little bit weird, you know? But they also talk about investing in building new franchises. So Hi-Fi Rush is not in that picture, I guess. So this is what Matt Booty said last year. Xbox says it's turned the corner when it comes to regular game releases. When we get into 2024, it really kicks into gear. According to Matt Booty. All right, that's according to Xbox Game Studios boss Matt Booty, who for the last couple of years has been speaking publicly about the company's ambition to deliver a new game each quarter. You know, when he said when he made these lofty promises of uh, a new game each quarter, I was already skeptical. I mean, like that output, that's insane. That maybe it's one triple A per year, but there's no way to pump out. A new game each quarter and they be they will be high quality i was high, highly doubtful and what happened what happened at the same time redfall and starfield was delayed so and people didn't take that well especially for game pass growth i think it stalled because of that and it was last year so now in 2024 guess what redfall was a complete dud and starfield wasn't that amazing at all so that didn't move the needle at all but the future is looking brighter, Booty told members of the press. Yeah, sure. 
This is also a quote from him. We had some gaps last year, but I think we've turned the corner going into 2023. He said via games industry. I am feeling very good about launching Hi-Fi Rush. <laughs> Oof, that's gotta hurt. I mean, this was last year, so one, one year later and oops, this is what happened. And what about Hellblade 2? Speaking of Hellblade 2, because I see it right now, it's gonna release in two weeks. And where's the marketing for Hellblade 2? There's no marketing at all. It's really strange these days. Also last year, Matt Booty said, they would not shut Redfall Studio Arcane Austin. Oof. They said they should have done a better job supporting the Bethesda Studio. So yeah, one year later, and here we are. So here's an article by Tom Warren. He posted this yesterday, and it's basically, what is he saying? Yeah, he's re reiterating that, you know, Microsoft had been considering bringing Gears of War to rival consoles, and we're still waiting to see if a long room with Gears of War collection is ever confirmed now for me i would love to see gears of war on playstation because i would definitely play that i would buy it in an instant that's the only ip that i like from xbox i'm just being honest there so moving on mm -hmm. yeah so this this post from tom warren is pretty uh pretty bad to be honest like uh, it has some juicy intel like apparently microsoft also had internal debates about whether to put new releases of Call of Duty into Game Pass. Because Call of Duty is a massive RP. And they're now thinking like, oof, if we put this on Game Pass, how can we make money out of this, you know? Like, oh. So they internally are debating this. And not in a good sense, if you ask me. Because Sarah Bond already promised day one on Game Pass, so. Second, all of our games will go into Game Pass on day one. Like you said, all of our games are always in Game Pass. They, they might have shot themselves in the foot a little bit here. They dug their own grave. But anyway, so, and now because of, uh, because of this, these sources tell him that Microsoft has also considered increasing the price of oh Game my. Pass Ultimate. The yep. debate internally reflects the fact Microsoft Xbox strategy has shifted from just delivering the games into Game Pass to considering bringing more games to multiple platforms. So also to Sony PlayStation. And that sounds like music to my ears. <laughs> well, look at the bright side though. When they announced these layoffs, they also announced a new controller. Feel the burn, baby. <laughs> With the Fire Vapor Special Edition controller. Oh, this is so bad. Feel the burn. Microsoft, man. Read the room. But I guess they couldn't read the room because it was too dark, right? So you might as well lit a candle to see a little bit. <laughs> oh, this is fire. Oh. Unfortunately, there's more bad news. Jason Schreier, this most prominent journalist, has posted on Bloomberg a really juicy... Uh, juicy article apparently Microsoft Xbox is planning more cuts after studio closings it's not over yet this is terrible yeah this article I'm probably gonna read read out the entirety of it um, let's see so the sudden closure of several video game studios at Microsoft Corp's Xbox division was the result of a widespread cost cutting initiative that still isn't finished this week Xbox began offering voluntary severance agreements to producers, quality assurance testers, and other staff at Zenimax. When it purchased in 2020 for 7.5 billion. According to people familiar with the company's plans, others across the Xbox organization have been told that more cuts are on the way. And that is terrible. During a town hall with Zenimax staff on Wednesday morning, Xbox president Matt Booty praised Hi-Fi Rush, but did not specify why the company had shut down the development studio behind it, according to three people who were in attendance. Speaking about the closures more broadly, speaking about the closures more broadly, Booty said that the company's studios had been spread too thin, like peanut butter on bread. Ouch. Delicious. And that leaders across the division had felt understaffed. They decided to close these studios to free up resources elsewhere, he said. 
Booty added that the shutdown of subsidiary Arcane Austin, the longtime developer of games such as Prey, was not connected to the perform performance of its new multiplayer game Redfall, a critical and commercial flop. Here's also a juicy part. So Jill Brav, head of Zenimax Studios, said in a town hall that she hoped the reorganization would allow the division, which also develops Fallout and Doom, to put more focus on fewer projects. It's hard to support nine studios all across the world with a lean central team with an ever-growing plate of things to do, she said, according to audio of the meeting reviewed by Bloomberg. I think we were about to topple over, she added. So yeah, this part is really interesting because it, imp imp it implies that when they bought Sandimax Studios, they now have too many studios and they can't even, they don't even have the capacity to run them properly. Uh, that's the gist of it. Here's another juicy part. So the massive Activision Blizzard acquisition has ramped up scrutiny on the Xbox division from leaders at Microsoft, according to people familiar. So Microsoft has spent 70 billion on the ABK acquisition, right? And now they're like, yo, because we spent so much money. Now we get to make the decisions. Where is our return of investment? You know, like, damn. So in recent years, Xbox became deeply invested in Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service that offers unlimited access to hundreds of downloadable games for a monthly fee. To fill the service with new enticements, Xbox acquired dozens of studios, including outfits known for making smaller games, such as San Francisco-based Double Fine. While most game publishers are looking to take big swings with games that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, Xbox promised to support less sprawling creative titles such as Hi-Fi Rush with smaller budgets and low sales expectations. It didn't matter if a game sold tens of millions of copies as long as it helped bolster as long as it helped bolster the Game Pass library. But Game Pass has not seen the massive growth that Xbox boss Phil Spencer may have been hoping for. While there's no indication that Xbox plans to ditch the Game Pass model, there are hints that its big bets have not paid off. During the most recent quarter, sales of Xbox content and services were up 62%. But as Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad pointed out last month, the growth was entirely due to the acquisition of Activision. On social media, he noted that without sales from that deal, Xbox gaming revenue would have been down approximately 5% year over year. With no software and services growth and sharp hardware revenue decline. Okay, so I think we have to address the elephant in the room. Game Pass. Like, you know, when they announced Game Pass in the beginning, I was always skeptical. I was like, you know, how is it sustainable? How can you make money out of Game Pass? You pay a subscription, but you put all these big ass games, day one, day and date, on the surface. And how are you going to get that, that investment back, you know? Because it, it takes a lot of money to make the games. And where's the ROE on Game Pass? For me, I never, I never believed it would be sustainable. And now a few years, a few years, four years later, this is where we stand. I guess, I guess it didn't pay off. I think Game Pass is failing right now. I think it's, I think Game Pass was a big mistake. And I think they're gonna feel it right now and it's gonna hurt, it's already hurting. So apparently, according to Matt Piscatella, he said, I think Matt Piscatella used to be, oh, he used to do uh, NPD and stuff like that, you know, like sales in America or whatever. But he said, so basically he said that monthly non-mobile, non-mobile video game subscription spending has been flat to low single digit growth since the middle of 2021. According to their data, they had the big growth period in late 2019 through early 2021, and then since then it has plateaued. It it stagnated. It hasn't grown 
grown, it stayed the same. It's it's level. Now that's not that's not good news, of course. Purchasing games and add-on content, as well as free-to-play models, are still the vastly preferred method of getting to video games by U.S. consumers, at least for now. If this is already in the U.S., uh, rest assured, it, it has to be the same in Europe, and it has to be worldwide the same. Because the U.S. is Xbox's strongest market. Let alone the rest of the world. I mean, I think Game Pass is failing. And it's just, a sh it's such a shame, you know. But yeah, growth of video game subscription spending has stalled. That's it, man. Here's the proof. It was only 2% higher than April 22. Finding new subscribers beyond the console ownership base has proven very difficult thus far. And Matt, uh, yeah, Matt Piss. Piscatella tweeted this, and it still stalled. In March, it was only up 1% versus last year. Only 1%. <laughs> the proof is here, boys. Game Pass is not growing. It's plateauing. People, people don't see. Uh, people are just not flocking to it. And for a good reason. I mean, like, what games do they put on Game Pass that you need to play? Starfield? Okay, if you are really disgruntled about this, you can always nuke Phil Spencer's camp in Fallout 76. <laughs> so here's a very interesting post from a former PR manager at Microsoft, Brad Hildeman. And he stated on LinkedIn, there are two reasons why all those Bethesda studios closed. And neither of them have anything to do with Bethesda directly. The two things are Game Pass and Activision. The biggest paradox with Game Pass is that basically every game that launches on the surface badly misses its sales tar uh, goals, targets. Makes sense though. Why pay full price to buy a game when you can play it for free as part of your subscription? This is accounted for somewhat by attributing portions of revenue to top performing Game Pass games every month. But there are factors working against games, namely the fact that most games don't stay at the top of the chart for more than a month or two. Also that Game Pass growth has stagnated. So games like Hi-Fi Rush, which is incredible mind you, gets a very small bump in revenue for being the hot Game Pass game for a month. Then it falls off a cliff when everyone moves on to the next thing. Poor Redfall had it even worse since it launched so rough. It never had a chance. So this system was fine for a while when Game Pass was growing like gangbusters, but now it's slowed down, way down. And the amount of revenue it's attributing to games isn't keeping up with the budgets to make them. But all that wouldn't have mattered even 3 or 4 years ago, because back then, Xbox was basically a rounding error on Microsoft's books. The division made some money, but more importantly, it didn't cost that much and other parts of the business easily covered the gap. Then Xbox went on the buying spree and spent a lot of money on Bethesda, but orders of magnitude more on Activision, 70 billion. Now the eye of Sauron has to, <laughs> the eye. Now the eye of Sauron has turned and Xbox is <laughs> the eye of Sauron. But Xbox is expected to start making that 70 billion back or at least cut expenses to the bone and then some. Well, they try. That brings us back to Game Pass. So far, the big bets on driving new subscriptions, Redfall, Starfield, haven't spurred near enough growth. And there's not much on the horizon that's likely to restart the momentum. The best bet is Call of Duty. But do you really risk the guaranteed sales revenue that franchise brings by putting it on Game Pass on day one, potentially lose massive sales? I don't know what the plans are, but either you put it on Game Pass and lose money, or you don't and the subscribers revolt because they think that's what they sign up for. Call of Duty will be fine though, as will the other mega studios with huge IPs, but you are seeing the impact. All those smaller studios making really interesting games are going to fall away, simply because as good as games like Hi5 Rush are, they're never going to make enough money to make up that 70 billion hole 
that Microsoft now has to dig itself out of. Now this post is really interesting because there's a lot of logic in it, right? Because they're already uh, debating internally about whether to put Call of Duty on Game Pass or not. They are really, they are really struggling right now because they paid seventy billion dollars to take over ABK, Activision Blizzard, and King or whatever. They paid seventy billion for this, and now they promise to put all games day and date on Game Pass, basically for free, right? And then not getting their investments back. So imagine the massive IP that is Call of Duty to put it for free on, on Game Pass. Microsoft right now is really debating if it's wise to do so. <laughs> so this is not good. Like, you know, I don't want to make fun of these. I mean, ugh, I don't want to make fun of these uh, developers, but uh, this is what you get if you sign up with Microsoft. So what is going on at Xbox? Xbox console sales are tanking. No wonder Microsoft is exploring bringing its games to PlayStation 5. Gaming subs like PlayStation Plus and Xbox Game Pass aren't growing at all. I mean, people are tired of these subscriptions, man. Come on. Microsoft tried to be the Netflix of gaming, but it's just a pipe dream. Xbox has never had a Game of the Year nominee since inception. They never had a Game of the Year in over a decade. Come on now. Six million players have explored Ghostwire Tokyo, but apparently six million. But what, what's, what's the point here? What is Microsoft focusing on? Sales? Revenue? Mouse? You know, monthly active users? Apparently... Six million players is not good. Not, it's not good enough. What about this? It's not good enough. And now we have Microsoft considering increasing the Game Pass price again. It's also <laughs> internally debating whether to put Call of Duty on Game Pass. I mean, they have to. They promised. I mean, Sarah Bond promised. All of our games are always in Game Pass. Here's another juicy one. Hellblade 2 is another game that Microsoft has been considering for the PS5. Keep them coming. We would love to support them. Speaking of Hellblade 2, you know, this game is going to release in two weeks. And there's barely any marketing out there. People are wondering, where's the marketing? This is the only marketing they are getting so far. Stating the fact they have marketing. You know, just tweeting about the marketing. Had a great review with the team leading our big global and regional marketing plans. This this dude is just tweeting about the marketing. But we don't see the actual marketing. It's it's ridiculous, man. Come on. Ah, Clobro. Even he is just devastated these days. <laughs> oh, feel the burn. And then a lot of uh, Phil Spencer's you know, past uh, statements have have aged like milk. They are so sour right now. This is a quote in the past from Phil Spencer, right? And a lot of Xbox comments from the past has aged like milk. This is just one example of them. One thing I won't do is push against creative aspirations of our teams. When a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango wants to do Hi-Fi, when everyone thought they were probably doing the Evil Within 3, I want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability, to push their aspirations, and to shut their studio down. Here we got man booty again. Xbox Studios boss says the days of single studio AAA games are long gone. He says Crystal Dynamics work on Perfect Dark is normal, not proof of a problem at all. What is the initiative's first game, the so-called quadruple A? You mean the quadruple A like Skull and Bones? But here we are, 2024. The latest rumors suggest Perfect Dark Reboot isn't going smoothly at the Xbox. It sounds like it's in a very rough state. Like Xbox. Xbox is in a very rough state right now. It's sad, man. It's sad. Here's the gist of it. Game Pass 
as a business model is a little bit flawed, right? When they announced Game Pass, people were skeptical, right? Skeptical. Like, how is it sustainable? How will they make money out of it? But the first few years, they were like, you know what? We have to attract as many people as we can. We're going to subsidize the money, the costs. We're going to eat the costs to attract as many subscribers as we can. But now, a few, few years later, it didn't pan out that way. They expected much bigger growth than they actually got, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think the fact they were banking on Game Pass this hard was a big mistake. I mean, Xbox Game Pass, I think it's a, I think it's a failure, to be honest. It's not the true next-gen Xbox Game Pass. No, no way. This is a graph and their projection of their growth from 2023 to 2030. They were hoping to get this many subscriptions, this many, this amount, you know? If I'm not mistaken, they only have like 30 million. So they are way below their target. I mean, they want 100 million subscribers by the, by the year of 2030. This is insane. They're not even hitting this at all. So what do you think? Do you guys think X, Xbox Game Pass is a, was a mistake? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> But look, so here we are. So I think they're focusing too much on the cloud, focusing too much on Game Pass. And the bottom line is, like any division of a company, Microsoft's gaming team clearly needs to please the big bosses while figuring out how to outmaneuver its gaming competitors. And let me tell you, I don't think the big bosses are pleased at all. So before I wrap up this video, I just want to highlight a few comments that I think is worth pointing out. So here's a few tweets of uh, some game developers that are really in the dirt. They are really in the trenches right now, you know, being laid off and all. This is from Jimmy Blanco. It's getting bad. I literally have dreams that my whole team, including myself, are getting let go, only to wake up to entire studios under my parent company getting dismantled. Somehow I'm still here. So, you know, even when Hi Fi Rush was an amazing game uh, with great ra uh, ratings, good reviews, even they were laid off. So can you, can you imagine how the other developers that are still there might feel? I bet your ass they are anxious. They, they don't know what, what is going to happen. They are literally very unsure. Anything can happen. Anything can go. Here's another tweet. The neat part is how every remaining Microsoft Game Studio employee gets to live in permanent anxiety that their studio will be next. Great for the creative headspace. Yeah, man, it's like, this situation is terrible. I can't imagine how, how unease, how, how uneasy everything is. Like, in perpetual fear or whatever. Constant anxiety. Maybe you to you will go. Maybe you're, you're next on the chopping block. Damn. I think this comment makes a lot of sense right now. So... Uh, he's replying to someone else, but the gist of it is uh, the industry didn't pivot to a failed Game Pass strategy. The industry didn't push for these acquisitions within Microsoft to bolster Game Pass. The industry didn't decide to then close these developers now that Game Pass is shitting the bed. The industry hasn't been mis mismanaging Xbox for over a decade. It is not an industry fault. It's not... PlayStation fault. It's Microsoft fault. It's Xbox fault. They have to take responsibility. So what even is the metrics for success for Microsoft these days? Selling consoles? Who knows? Selling games? Who knows? Selling game pass? Who knows? We don't know these days what they're focusing on. 
is it monthly monthly active users well even when hi-fi rush had 3 million players it's it doesn't seem to matter what does matter revenue profit who knows we all know it's not having good games for the rare instances that they do it's not selling consoles or games because game pass and releasing on pc with game pass dilutes the chances on that selling game pass then does the game doing well on Game Pass attribute to growth on Game Pass when they are reaching the audience gap and therefore stagnating the income? The income by which they will base their budgets on, the studios and games they will have to fund otherwise they won't release on the platform? I'm just wondering what the hell do they want the studios to do to, ma to maintain the float individually if they are not doing Call of Duty. Acquiring Activision just magnifies the problem even more with an ungodly price tag that not the shareholder want to see value from and now studios are becoming collateral Con the conclusion is this is what I believe how can you make game pass sustainable well in my opinion there's only one way to do it that's uh, to monetize it right they should have focused on monetizing uh, game pass how can you monetize game pass well, you cannot put ads in the games or in the subscription UI or whatever. Because that doesn't make sense, right? Because you already pay subscription, so you, they, people don't want to see ads. But the number one way to monetize something is by microtransactions. So I always believed when they introduced, uh, when they introduced Game Pass, the first few years, you want to attract a lot of people. Like, hey, come here to the $1 upgrade. Very cheap, you get as many games you can get for a low subscription fee. It's amazing. People were championing it, people were loving it. Oh, game Pass, savior of gaming. But now, a few, uh, a few years later, it doesn't work like that. It has to be sustainable. So, how can you make it sustainable? Well, by microtransactions. So, I was, I was always skeptical from the beginning, but I was always under the impression, you know what? They will implement microtransactions to the brim best way to implement microtransactions in games is with live service games right games as a service and this is what is right they're perfect to to games as a service live service games was with halo infinite forza motorsport well no gears but anyway you get the gist of it but unfortunately halo infinite was was a dud to be honest so they couldn't capitalize on it unfortunately but they were hoping on it they were banking on it so what else what what game what else what kind of game they can put in game pass and monetize it well that's what they have to figure out and apparently the microsoft overlords are impatient ever since they bought activision they want to see their roe almost immediately they're not even giving time <laughs> It's crazy. So what I think, uh, what I really think is what they're going to do now is, uh, because Game Pass is not growing, they're going to focus on other platforms, spreading more out, maybe even more microtransactions. But for now, they cannot really do it with uh, single-player games. But maybe they will focus on uh, multiplayer games and put more microtransactions in it, monetize it. That's the number one problem right now. How to effectively, efficiently monetize their games. Because when it comes to pure subscription numbers, it's not enough. It's failing. So, you know, if you ask me, release Gears of War on PlayStation, I will buy it. I will support you. <laughs> Bring more games to us. Hellblade 2. Come, let's do it. I will support you. But yeah, man, it's a crazy few days, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, I think uh, Xbox has a lot of hard work to do. I'm looking forward to the showcase at June, the 9th of June. I think I'm gonna definitely follow it. I've never really been an Xbox uh, player myself, but I used to play uh, on Xbox 360. I used to play Gears of War 1, 2, 3, Halo 1, 2, 3. I remember the days they had exclusive mass effect the exclusive splinter cell i used to play 
but at a friend of mine because he had the Xbox and I always had the PlayStation. But remember those days when Xbox had killer apps. That's the biggest problem Xbox has right now. Killer apps that are not focusing on the games. They're focusing on nonsense surfaces. Crossplay, cross safe, services, this, that, cloud, subscription. Piss off. I don't need that shit. Nobody needs more subscriptions. We've got Netflix. We've got enough Disney. Max, whatever. HBO. Focus on the killer apps. You have not built a single killer app in 10 years. Not a single game of the year. Convince me to buy an Xbox. But now, who would want to buy an Xbox these days? And for the developers, I feel sorry for them. Like, they have to find a new job now. Oh, it's terrible. But hey, it's going to be more layoffs. So, get ready. This is terrible. But anyway, I'm rambling way too much now. So, uh, I never made a video like this. This is the first time. Uh, but I've done a lot of reading, researching. I think it's a lot of rambling in my video. Maybe chaotic. But it's the same thing going on at Xbox right now. Chaos. Chaos. So I don't know what they're going to do. But they need to fix this. They had over a decade to fix this. And it's 2024 and we're still in the same same old same old mud you know they never got out of the mud <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say man this was the video hey peace out man see you in the next video <laughs> yeah. cray cray and when we step back and we just look at the performance of our platform all up we know it's working we're at the highest level of users on console the highest level of users on PC the highest level of users on cloud ever. We have double digit growth rate on PC and cloud, places where we're enabling creators to actually reach new players beyond the console ecosystem. And that's why we're leaning into it and doing more because we see all those signals. And we didn't do a good job early on in engaging with Arcane Austin to really help them understand what it meant to be part of Xbox and part of first party and use some of our internal resources uh, to to help them and, and kind of move along that journey even faster. So we kind of left them to go work on the game. They're a very talented team. I love that team and I still do. And I will totally bet on them to do another great game. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people. So I, I want a quick shout out to Makami-san, who mm -hmm. was head of Tango for a long time and is deciding he wants to kind of step away from that studio leadership. I just say he's been such a great confidant for me in talking about uh, things that we should be doing better in Japan and, and work that um, we need in the opportunities that we have. But most important, really growing that studio into a mm -hmm. position that launches something like Hi-Fi, yeah. which is totally out of what people would expect is their wheelhouse mm -hmm. of games. So just thanks to Mikami-san for all the great work that he's done. But yeah, having Hi-Fi kind of shadow drop there and and do really well. Like people Phenomenally just, well. Yeah. And all of the games from our incredible range of studios will always launch in Game Pass day one. Yeah, I mean, for first of all, for us, um, the goal around game pass has always been to make more games more accessible to more people like that is the goal uh, it's not to turn everybody into a subscriber nowhere in our mission statement at xbox is to say everybody needs to become a subscriber we want it to be an option for people on our platform some people will buy games we think that's fantastic some people will play free to play games that's also great and we think a content-based subscription has a place in our industry uh, and i'm proud of the work that the game pass team has done from an economic standpoint i see the same chatter like is it profitable how does it work for us it's pretty straightforward um, we invest in our first party games. We invest in specific third party deals to bring games into Game Pass. Game Pass is obviously a revenue stream. Uh, we have subscribers and those subscribers are paying money every month and that creates a revenue pool for us um, in Game Pass. And that's a fairly large number at this point. In addition, those games sell on our platform. They're in our stores, whether it's on Windows or on console or now with cloud. Um, out there as well. So when we look at the economics of Game Pass, it's not just 
is a subscribe how many games is this subscriber playing in the subscription and if they would have purchased those games or some number of those games you know what's the trade off on purchase versus subscriber revenue we never really look at it that way what we do is we say are we growing the number of players on our platform and are they playing more often um, and from that activity we see the business grows the number one metric that we can look at to see if our business is actually growing mm -hmm. is are people playing more on the platform there's not it's not there's nothing about review score there's nothing about retail sales of console or retail sales of games the number one sign that our platform is healthy and growing is actually engagement on the platform from players and that is what game pass is growing so our business mm -hmm. continues to grow and continues to be profitable at Xbox. And, um, and we're very proud of that. Like it's an important part of, of what we do. And I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way.